Washington Pod presents Earl Nightingale. Lewis Mumford, the social critic, says that the great saints of the last century were as often as not artists, like Van Gogh or the great American painter, writer, or Tolstoy. As was pointed out so well in the publication Manus, Van Gogh was late in becoming an artist. He began at the age of 27, and his enormous output, 840 paintings and 850 drawings and watercolors, were all done during the last 10 years of his life. He was always desperately poor. Only one painting was sold during his entire lifetime. He sold that one to his brother, and he had no exhibitions. Blows, disappointments, and discouragements followed him everywhere. Yet he painted furiously until the end, doing 70 paintings and more than 30 drawings in the last 70 days of his life. His name was virtually unknown when he died. Today, Van Gogh is generally considered the greatest Dutch painter after Rembrandt. In 1883, he wrote, In my opinion, I am often very rich. Not in money, but rich because I have found my vocation. Something for which I can live with heart and soul, and which gives life inspiration and meaning. Van Gogh's work was the distillation of the life of a man who was both driven and led to do what he had to do. He said, to be a link in the chain of artists, we pay a heavy toll in health, youth, and freedom, and we benefit not at all by it, no more than does a horse drawing a coachload of people who are out to enjoy the spring. Albert Ryder was born six years earlier than Van Gogh in 1847 and lived as a recluse in New York City. He cooked on an open grate on a small stove, saw only a few friends, and slept on a piece of carpet on the floor. When the famous art critic, Carl Hartman, who could have made Ryder famous overnight, called and stuck his card in the locked door and then returned later, he found a laconic note from Ryder saying, I always spend my time looking at the sky at this season of the year. Ryder's brother, who owned a small hotel, found him half-starved in a furnished room and brought him back to the hotel to take care of him. Ryder, to his brother's irritation, fraternized with the servants, and when a waiter with whom he became friendly killed himself after losing all his money on a wild bet at the racetrack, Ryder painted the racetrack, perhaps his best-known work. Of the painter, Ryder said, the artist must buckle himself with infinite patience. His ears must be deaf to the clamor of insistent friends who would quicken his pace. His eyes must see naught but the vision beyond. He must await the season of fruitage without haste, without worldly ambitions, without vexation of spirit. An inspiration is no more than a seed that must be planted and nourished. The canvas I began ten years ago I shall perhaps complete today or tomorrow. It's been ripening under the sunlight of the years that come and go. It's a wise artist who knows when to cry halt in his composition, but it should be pondered over in his heart and worked out with prayer and fasting. So these people have much to teach everyone, not merely about art, but about life and work in the real world. That's what Lewis Mumford means. And when we study the lives of such people, it makes us take a new look at our work.